The movie The Entity was called one of the scariest horror films of all time by Martin Scorsese. Much like the movie The Exorcist, the events in the movie were said to be based on true events that happened to a woman named Doris Bither. The Doris Bither case, also known as The Entity Haunting, was a 1974 investigation into alleged paranormal phenomena in Culver City, California, experienced by a woman named Doris Bither. The case inspired Frank de Felita's 1978 book The Entity which was made into a 1982 film of the same name starring Barbara Hershey. 1974 was when Doris first spoke of her problem with paranormal investigators Dr. Barry Taff and his associate Carrie Gaynor. At the time Doris was a young, single mother in her 30s. A string of abusive relationships took their toll on her, driving her to suffer emotionally and seek the solace of alcohol. This put a strain on her relationship with her four children, a girl, six years old, and three boys, 10, 13, and 16 years old, by four different fathers. Doris had overheard the men discuss paranormal occurrences at a bookstore, so she invited them to come by her place as she believed it was haunted. It wasn't until the investigators got there that she told them that she had been sexually assaulted by a trio of violent entities. The smallest two would hold her down while the tallest one would sexually assault her. The troubled woman's eldest child tried intervening once while his mother was tossed around the room, but he was thrown across the room as well and broke his arm. Now this was the first time Dr. Taff and Gaynor had heard of spectral sexually assault. However, their doubts disappeared once they saw the bruises on her inner thighs and all over her body. Doris' neighbors also testified to seeing apparitions moving around the house. The children too had seen these beings, in fact, they appeared so frequently that one of the children dubbed the most prominent one as Mr. Who's It. Deciding to see this story through, the paranormal investigators called in their team and set up their equipment to detect manifestations. According to their report, Doris was instructed to summon the beings, so she began swearing and yelling at them. Suddenly, lights manifested around the room. As she continued hurling abuses, a green mist swirled from a corner and started growing to form the muscular upper torso of a man. Despite their equipment, investigators managed to only capture a free-floating arc on top of Doris as she sat on her bed. Interviewing the whole family, the investigator found out that the entities lashed out at certain songs such as those of Black Sabbath. Moreover, it seemed that the entities were growing stronger due to the emotional issues surrounding each member of the family. However, the paranormal activities were strongest whenever Doris herself was present in the home. Despite leaving that house, Doris claimed that the entities followed her every time she and her family members moved. She even claimed that she became pregnant due to the spectral rapes, but medical tests showed that she was suffering from an ectopic pregnancy. After the late 80s, Doris hasn't been heard of. Her son, however, did come forth for an interview in 2009, which is when the world found out that she passed away from pulmonary arrest in 1995. 